coming up next on Button to Christ Ministries. If the company is profitable and you want to invest in a company, you're not going to invest in a company that do tobacco or do guns. You got to just pray about it and invest in the safe company. It's not talking about day trading. We're around the computer 24 hours a day watching the trade and doing trading. Because where is going to be the time you're going to spend with the Lord? We have to do things in moderation. So just as the Lord has given the, 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 the people in that parable different amount of talents to go and to invest or to multiply. And if you remember the parable quite clearly, one dug a hole and brought it back. God wants us to multiply, to invest. Stay tuned. Week after week, we ask you to send in your questions. If you have any questions, if you have any concerns, please, you know, send them in. You could send them via email at buntochrist 70 at gmail.com or you could text at 647-290-5125 or, you know, you can call the line at the, at the end of each service. And you, if you want to just, if you have any questions, any concerns that you would like us to answer or share with us our experiences or testimonies indeed now is the time that you can do that but we're going to definitely be shifting gear and getting into our questions and answers for those who have been sending in their questions we thank you we appreciate you sending in your questions to god be the glory yes young man come praise on forth lord. praise god god praise be the, the lord. lord praise the lord solid Amen. Every solid. Time. Solid. solid praise solid. the lord praise, praise the lord have a seat my friend praise Amen. the lord Praise God. Amen. Well, you Amen. know, I know this summer has been, you know, been a crazy one per se. You know, it's been hot, been cool. It hasn't been really hot, 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 but, you Amen. know, to God with the glory. How are you doing, brother? Praise God. God Praise is the Lord. great. He's gracious. He's gracious Praise indeed. God. Mighty Praise and God. powerful. Awesome God we serve. Well, we have a few questions we'd definitely like to, you know, for us to, for you to answer. Um, for those who have been sending in their questions mm -hmm. and you know as we share you know week after week and people are asking questions and you know related to their families related to what's happening what's taking place you know they're just you know enthusiastic about you know they're you're answering and based upon your experience and beyond that based upon the word of the lord Amen. so we give god praise, praise god. we give god thanks for you always solid praise the lord should christians be getting involved in this thing called trading to make money also carrot bars i am keen to know because i was introduced into it by someone in the church mercy a lot of people in the churches are into network marketing which is a little bit different because it's hard when somebody take you down the road of network marketing and it fail it's gonna cause enemies in the church. So the safe way is to reflect on God's word and what would God do? Um, if the company is profitable and you want to invest in a company, you're not going to invest in a company that do tobacco or do guns. You got to just pray about it and invest in the safe company. It's not talking about day trading. We're around the computer 24 hours a day watching the trade and doing trading. Because where is going to be the time you're going to spend with the Lord? We have to do things in moderation. So just as the Lord has given the, 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 the people in that parable different amount of talents mm -hmm. to go and to invest or to multiply. And if you remember the parable Quite clearly, one dug a hole and brought it back. God wants us to multiply, to invest our time, our money, in a, you know, but do it in a safe way. So for me personally, I cannot answer 
your question, but when it comes to network marketing and what was mentioned about the goal, I wouldn't do it. And that's me personally. I would invest in something where, you know, it's reputable and it's a good company and it's according to the will of God. They are doing things that will benefit human mm -hmm. and it's not going against God's will. And if you're getting into day trading, I would say no. It's like gambling because you're spending so many, much time. Then where can you find or when can you find time with God? Hmm. So it's a very sticky situation, but a lot of God's people invest the proper way and the return will be rewarding. Praise God. And the key thing there, as you, as you mentioned, is to pray. Amen. Ask God to show you the right company because there are a lot of companies out there, accursed companies, that, you know, want you to invest, you know, your money in, you know, per se, wrongdoing. Amen. And, and, you know, that's why discernment is keen and praying Amen. is keen. But definitely, you know, it's a means to invest, to multiply by all means. Because when God directs you and leads you, definitely you're on the right course, on the Amen. right path. Praise definitely God. thank you Praise for sharing God. that with us. I noticed that it is often said when a child appears wiser than their age or appear much like someone that has passed, People sometimes say that the child has an old soul or an old spirit. Can you explain what they mean by that? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Is it something that they may require deliverance? You see, um, the devil always comes up with plan to discourage God's people. If you have a child and the child is brilliant, you just got to anoint them and encourage that child to go higher. Um, what you mentioned there is definitely cultural. It's definitely traditional. And it depends on your culture. Some people have things in their culture that they embrace. And we're going to talk about that tonight too. Coming forth with cultural belief and belief that is biblical. Which, when it's not. So if you have a yes. child that is very brilliant, smart, and knows a lot, I will not identify that child with tradition or cultural things. No. God has given good gifts. And I remember God used many children in the Bible mm -hmm. that excel in, in strength and in wisdom. wisdom. Mm -hmm. Knowledge, thank you so much for Amen. sharing. In asking God to bind and cast out demonic powers, should this be done audibly or by praying silently in our hearts, partial, um, particularly if we are in public places? Well, you see, God moves whether it's silent prayer or open prayer. Sometimes you need to declare God's glory so that the enemy can hear openly. And I know I did a series talking about 10 or 12 ways, things about prayer. Mm -hmm. And one of them is praying out loud. Because when you pray loud, you're not fearful. You're praying with authority that God will move and his power will move. And by believing and praying with this authority, you will see God work. Nice. So... Sometimes it may take, for instance, I went, I shared a testimony already where I went to a school and it's a huge university and I'm praying for somebody and I ask God within my heart, deliver this person without a public scene. And God did. So it have it, its time and its purpose when you have to pray silently. But if you're going to pray silent because you're afraid of the public or you don't want people to know what you're doing, look at Daniel. When they told Daniel the king passed a decree and you cannot pray, the mm. very moment Daniel knelt down on his knees and prayed and said, the God whom I serve is a bigger God. So when we come to approach prayer, 
We need not to worry. Just come in authority and we'll see the results. Praise the Lord. And Amen. seeing results, you know what I mean? I, I know you have been a man of prayer, praying for a lot of individuals and, you know, seeing how God has just been, you know, multiplying you and giving you different talents and gifts. And, you know, it, it is such a wonderful thing because in praying, what I recognize, you need the spirit of discernment. Amen. As you said, to know when you can pray out aloud and when you need to reserve and pray and press in prayer still because man. the enemy knows anywhere you go, man, it's just a war indeed. That's it. One church member said to me, I must read the seven book of Moses. I told her there was no seven book of Moses. She laughed at me. So I decided to Google it. And to my surprise, it's a bad book. God protected me. I am now so convinced she is a witch. Which advice, what advice do you have regarding this situation? Do I approach the woman or just leave it alone? Well, first of all, that woman who gave her that seventh book of Moses, know that it's not in the Bible. We have to be scholars. We have to know the word of God. There are 66 books in the Bible. We don't need no extra one. We just need to study the word. If you know the book of Moses, a lot of people are coming out with different ancestors and, you know, we don't believe in the Holy Spirit again and all different things. It's the last days. Christ is about to come. And there's going to be fa false Christ and, you know, you know all different prophets. false prophets is going to arise mm -hmm. from, from evil within. What are we going to do? We have to know the word. So therefore, there's no seventh book of Moses. So... We have to just confess because we have to know our own word, know the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord. We can't jump on every bandwagon that comes. People are going to tell you, just as the word says, in the last days, false Christ will appear. And people will come and say, he's over there. We already know the prophecies. We know. Are we going to jump and go and look? The powerful deceptive spirit is going to swept us away. So we have to learn from now how to stand our grounds. What does the word say? What does the Bible say? Is this book. They are coming out with the book of Enoch. All different books I'm hearing arising. Why do we need to know more? We don't even study the word that is given now. Why we want to go beyond? We have to just, for her, I think she just have to confess to the Lord and leave it in the hands of the Lord. You don't even have to approach anybody. Let the Lord do the work. Let the Lord do the work indeed. Amen. But it, that book there, um, from what um, I had a sister that was talking to me about that book, um, our so-called book, um, and it's basically just sorcery and witchcraft and, you know, taking it to a different level. So that's why the person now is saying that, you know, do you believe that this person is a witch and what they have to do? Well, as you said, you know, take it to the Lord in prayer. I ask the Lord to to, you know, definitely convict her as well as to, you know, remove those spirits. Because that's well. a door that person already opened the door by going to even searching for that. Because if you want to know, open the Bible. Don't even go to the internet and start to search for things. Open the word of God. Amen. Open the word of the Lord. And that's Amen. why we ought to be living by the word. Living Amen. by what he continues to give us. Leviticus 5 verses 19 and 18 says, Beloved, your, beloved, loved your neighbor as yourself. Luke 10 verses 27 says, Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. Luke 10 37 says, Jesus says that our neighbor is anyone who needs our help regarding the regarding reading, sorry, the me first attitude that some Christian in our churches believe. How should a true Christian relate to this question when these texts state the opposite? 
Because basically what the person is saying is that it's always about me. And if, if God is saying, love your neighbor as yourself, then you know you have to love yourself so much, then you're able now to love your neighbor, which is like the me attitude. So you see, the word says God is love. Mm -hmm. And love comes from God and it's a gift. So for us to give that love and to love our neighbors as ourselves, we got to recognize what love really is, and we have to have that relationship with Christ. Uh, my usual says, you can't give what you don't have. Mm -hmm. You can't love your neighbor as yourself when some of us don't know what love is. We don't love ourselves. You know what I'm saying? We don't have that relationship. Because to get to love somebody, you have to get to know them. And when we get to know Christ, and that love comes from Christ, we will want to share it. It's just like forgiving. Forgiving is something that we have to pass on. God forgave us, we have to learn to forgive. Mm -hmm. That's how it goes. So we can't give what we don't have. So first of all, we have to develop that relationship, that love with Christ. And when you have that love, and you see somebody in need, the pain is going to go deep. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know who Christ is, that he died for us, yeah. he shed his blood on the cross, and it's real, you ain't going to comprehend it. Mercy. You always talk about, you know, not being able to share what you don't have. And as people are listening on the line, they, they know that they need to come up higher. What are some encouraging words that you can, you know, share with the audience? You know, you can share with, you know, those who want to come up higher, but, you know, sometimes they just don't know how. They just don't know how to dig deeper. What can you encourage them? How can you encourage them and, and share? First, I would do a, like a to-do list. Get a paper and lay out how you're going to study the word. Just lay out and say, okay, I'm going to study Psalms 51 first. And when you're doing it, don't rush. Just take your time and do two verses at a time. Dialogue with the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to come down and to infill you and to give you the wisdom and the knowledge. And by you doing that and taking your time, don't rush. A lot of people rush and study the word. And by the time they're finished, they don't get anything from it. It just pass right through. So once you start to fill yourself with the word, you're reading it and asking the Holy Spirit to bring everything clear, make it clear, bring the knowledge. Then the love of Christ is going to start to shed mm -hmm. on you. And once it start to shed the love of Christ, by their fruits you shall know them. If you have the spirit of anger and people hate to come around you, by filling yourself with the word of God, Things around you are going to affect you. The way people are, the way people are going through pain. Today, a young man showed me a video coming out of India of some Hindu beating a Muslim young man to death. And halfway I said, I don't want to see it. Because the compassion that is coming from me, I said, Lord have mercy. And that stayed on my mind from about two o'clock until now to see somebody beating a human it doesn't matter what religion you see love have no borders love is not going to say tell me what religion you are first and then i will help you when somebody cry out for help the love that is within you will afford you that 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 time and that ways to go out and say, I'm here, mm -hmm. what can I help you with? When we go to help people in the community, we don't ask you, what religion are you? What church do you go to? A lot of people is after everything, they said, what religion are you? And I said, I'm Seventh-day Adventist. They said, wow. I said, it's not about the religion. It's about reaching out. Mm -hmm. Love have no borders. Love, this, love is not puffed up. Mm -hmm. Love doesn't envy. Love reaches out. 
and helps people. And definitely. That's why we ought to be reading that first Corinthians chapter 13, the Amen. love chapter Amen. that tells us about love. Amen. And Christ is that love. So brother, Amen. just want to give you thanks. You know what I mean? For coming Amen. out every praise week, God. week after week, solid, solid as a rock. Yes. Yes. As God praise continue to, you know, praise sustain and maintain and much. praise you the Lord. Amen. And for those who are online, we definitely want to, you know, thank you for sending in your request for sharing with us. You know what I mean? Your questions, your concern. And then week after week as we reach out to you, I pray and I trust that God will continue to just multiply and just to give you so you can indeed give back to the community. So continue to send your question in at buntochrist70 at gmail.com or you can text in your question at 647-209-1155. That's 647 647- 290 rather 5125 you could send your text messages with your questions and we'll definitely get to you know i mean dialogue on your question so please thank you again what would it take to be free thank you for watching the bun to christ ministry in jesus name praise god thanks for watching this program we hope that you were blessed to further your support with us please consider giving a donation at buntochrist.com or .org any amount is appreciated and will be used for the continued growth of our ministry and the spreading of the gospel to the world. May God richly bless you and we'll see you next time.